So I wanted to make a quick video that just shows off how I use queries in Roam in order to like keep track of my ideas uh, for content. And I just think it's so incredible for this purpose because it's super easy to do. As I'm writing, as I'm writing anything, as I'm working on any of my projects, if I think to myself, oh, this idea that I wrote related to this project, it might have some broader applicability, like more people might be interested in this, then I can just tag it with blog. And then that block of text is going to show up in the linked references for blog. It's that easy. And the problem with this, though, is just that the blog page ends up getting so many linked references. Uh, it's kind of hard to handle. I have over 80 right now in there, and I, I need some way to reduce that list for myself. Because really, like, the point of it all is that I wanted to have a list of prompts, uh, a list of writing prompts. This goes back to when I was in college doing stand-up comedy. I mean, like, a, a lot of my note-taking habits, they originated in some sense from when I was doing stand-up comedy. And at the time, uh, I really just wanted to write a lot. I wanted to have a huge amount of content, but the anti the something that would get in the way of that would be starting from a blank page. If I say to myself, okay, I have 30 minutes uh, to just write something funny, let's write something funny. That's really hard to do. So what I ended up doing was I would just, any time that I came up with any idea at all uh, that had even a semblance of being funny or might be funny later, I would add it to a folder in my notes that was just labeled jokes. Uh, that ended up getting unwieldy for the same reason that the blog uh, linked references ended up getting unwieldy. There were just so many getting added into there that it was hard for me to find a prompt that I actually wanted to work from. Uh, I would be continuously looking through my notes, having to reevaluate every time that I read them. Is this joke worth developing? Is this not? Uh, so what I ended up doing is I came up with a system, just three folders, joke premises. This was the starting point for all my notes. Um, jokes to develop. This was whenever I was looking through the joke premises and I was like, oh, this is an actually good idea. I move it into the jokes to develop. And then jokes to perform, those were just any that were ready for the stage. Uh, and my current process is pretty similar, fairly similar. Uh, I have premise, develop, published is basically jokes to perform. I also have archive. Um, archive being, and if a note's just actually not relevant, but like I can't take the blog tag away from it, that's usually what that's for. Um, and then in progress, that's just to keep track of like what I'm actually working on right now so I can have some semblance of focus to it. Now, I also want to point out that uh, something that makes linked references on their own hard for this is just that uh, there's multiple ways that I can refer to this. Blog, content, video, those all mean essentially the same thing for what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to find ideas of things to produce creatively. And so what I end up doing is within the query, I use this OR operator. Uh, you can see more details on how this works in my previous video on query syntax and logic. But what this is essentially saying is that all three of these page names, blog, content, and video that are within the OR operator, within those curly brackets, those are all essentially the same thing for the sake of the query. Uh, if any of those are present in the block, then they're going to show up. And then this here is 
the not or command. This is what I use to process my notes and show myself what is unprocessed. So or again, this just means any of the blocks can these blocks can be present in uh, in order to surface in the query. But because the or command is wrapped in a not, um, then that means if any of these blocks are present in or if any of these page names are present in the block, then they're not going to show up in the query. So this gives me an, I have a few views of this. I'll zoom out for, uh, I'll zoom out for just a sec so you can see this. I have a view for unprocessed notes, a view for uh, blogs and just content to develop and a view for what is in progress. So the unprocessed view, it just combines the two sets of operators that I just showed you earlier, and it filters out anything that I've processed so far. So I might say, okay, interview-based personality assessments. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give that a develop, or interview-based personality assessments. I'm gonna put that into develop, uh, same with ooh, how to measure motivation. That's a good one. And whenever I do this, uh, whenever I do this and I move my mouse outside of that block, then it comes out of this query because this query is only showing what I haven't processed yet. Those things are processed, so they're out. Uh, what I'm essentially doing is creating an inbox for myself. You can imagine doing this on to-dos as well and for quick entry. So then that takes me to the develop view. Uh, this just shows me the ideas that are worth developing. And I'm something you might notice in here is that the blog ideas, they usually, they don't always, but they usually have a page name. Uh, to them, like features rarely make sense to new users without the context of user goals. Okay, why do I do that? Uh, it, it's because that's a thought, that's an idea that comes up a lot in my work. I'll often work with onboarding for products. And so, again, that's just super relevant. So whenever I'm working on one of those projects, I'll just tag, uh, I'll tag this page name, this blog idea, anytime it's relevant. And so that way, by the time I move on to uh, what's in progress, I'm able to look through its linked references and I already have a starting point for writing. I could like create an outline just from the things that I was working on that were tangential uh, to it. So this is what I'm currently working on. Um, only one of these is related to Rome. Crazy enough, I do stuff outside of Rome too. <laughs> and I'll even do the same thing once I like get to these projects too. You know, so it's like with products to study people, I'll just open right sidebar because I have this open. You know, like I'll have a saved view of unprocessed notes. I'll have a saved view of ones to develop. What this essentially lets me do is is progressively process my notes. It's kind of like a take on progressive summarization from Tiago Forte, where um, where each time I'm looking through the list of things that are unprocessed, each time I look through that, I'm processing it. And I'm not completing it all of the way. I can drop off at a certain point. Like if I'm looking through all of my blog ideas, and I don't make it through processing the whole thing, then I can come back to it later. I can pick up where I left off. What it also lets me do, and this is more relevant once you get to like the products, like once you get to the level of actually working on a project and using these sorts of processing queries uh, there, is it lets you continuously build on an idea that develops over time, right? Um, I'm going to constantly be thinking about things related to products to study people and constantly writing those in, and those are going to be flowing into the unprocessed thing. What I don't want to happen is make it so I get to the point where I'm actually writing the blog, 
and I have to go through this massive list of things that remain unprocessed. I'd really rather just have it so I already processed most of it. And maybe there's still a little bit left that remains unprocessed, but that's all I need to look through at that point. So I, I hope that this video was helpful to you. It, I find it incredibly useful as a general workflow to filter out in my queries any tags that I'm using to process that query. Uh, so that way I'm able to have an unprocessed view. And it just makes working on all these different sorts of projects a, a whole lot easier. It makes maintaining an inbox a whole lot easier. Um, would highly recommend giving it a shot. And if you're doing this and any ideas end up coming up as a result of it, please let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear more about how you're using Roam, how you deal with the problem of like what to process or not, or whether you just don't process your notes at all. Uh, I find it incredibly valuable to process my notes because it means that I'm looking through my notes again. That was one of the biggest things that got in the way for me with any of the other note taking apps that I was using before is I never really reviewed my notes. And as a result, they kind of just got lost into the ether. The things that I wrote then were only useful in that moment. Whereas by processing things, by continuously looking back at, at them, figuring out what's good, what's not good, uh, you are, one, reviewing things so that way your notes can travel into the future with you, but also you're helping yourself out in the future. What I described with having this sort of processing workflow for an individual blog, for the products to study people blog, what that allows me to do is it lets me figure out what's good so that way later I don't need to figure that out again. I already have that determined. So as always, like, subscribe. Uh, if you like it or subscribe it or comment on this video, that just tells YouTube that other people might be interested in this and it helps other people to find it. And please leave any comments or questions for me if anything remains unclear. Thank you for watching.